I don't usually have all my stuff out when I do the intro to the video, but it took us like an hour to assemble everything here. And uh, this is why I don't really do batch cocktails on this channel very often, because it's a pain in the butt. Um, today we are doing, if you haven't guessed it, Jägermeister cocktails. A couple years ago, we did a video called How to Drink Jäger Like an Adult. Was that like three years ago? Uh, no, it must be more. You don't think? Four? Four. Really? Four years ago? Anyway, um, people like Jägermeister, people hate Jägermeister, people are not indifferent to Jägermeister though. It's one of those things like a cult movie. You either love it or you hate it. Today, I'm gonna bring you a few more challenging cocktails to tantalize your palate um, with uh, Jäger. Uh, you know, the thing about Jäger is that it gets really short shrift. I'm not gonna go through all of the uh, specs on Jaeger and how it's made. That was done in the other video. You can go check that one out. But what I will say about it is that this thing is usually the first thing that people are introduced to when they're introduced to drinking. That was the same for me and people, a lot of people have that same story. It's either that or Seagram's Gin. That's another one that people tend to get into. It's like in their parent stash or whatever. And so I think it gets a little bit of short shrift in the cocktail community, that being said. Uh, where we are now with craft cocktails, there are a lot of fantastic Jaeger cocktails out there. So the first thing we're gonna be doing, if you didn't pay attention to what is on the bar here, is a Jaegermeister Bloody Mary. I think that's a good one to start this video. Just keep in mind that you should really have everything chilled. Like your Guinness should be chilled, your Jaegermeister should be chilled. I'm using uh, canned pineapple juice because the pineapples uh, at Whole Foods were not ripe enough. Uh, and if you go to Trader Joe's, you can get some nice, not from concentrate, 100% pineapple juice with nothing else in it. And it's actually pretty good in a pinch. So we're gonna use that today. Uh, and then obviously you're not chilling your things. Okay, let's let's make, so we're just gonna make this straight into a pitcher. It's gonna be super easy. Got it, got it, good. First things first, half a cup of orange juice. And then we're gonna do half a cup of pineapple juice as well. Quarter cup of lemon juice. Apparently the people that live in the town that Sriracha is made is like petitioning the government against the company making Sriracha because the entire town smells like Sriracha and then also I guess some people's eyes burn or something because yeah, of the chili pepper. I've heard that, yeah. Also now like they're saying, does it taste the same now? Now that after the whole you Sriracha... You want me to do a bump here? You want me to do a wasa... You want me to do a uh, Sriracha snooter? This is a very You know dark. what a Sriracha snooter is, right? You... Just a, yeah. It's a very dark looking sriracha. It is, but it's not supposed to be, um, ooh, that is, <clears throat> it's I mean, it tastes like sriracha to me. <coughs> Usually it's a little brighter red, right? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that myself, but I've had this bottle for a while. I don't use it that much. Hold on. <coughs> That's probably why. Ooh, but, ooh uh, it's got some kick. After um, the sriracha shortage, there's like, a, people have been like, it doesn't taste the same, or does it taste the same? I don't know if it's the I same. I mean, I don't know if I've eaten enough of it to be able to know whether it tastes yeah. the same from that time to this time. But I will say that uh, it tastes the same to me from the time I can remember eating it. I mean, it's just um, it, it does look, look um, dark, and I was wondering, like, maybe because we didn't refrigerate it, but it just says, I mean, it's just in a cool, dry place, and so it's in my... It's in my uh, pantry, you know. Um, it tastes fine. I don't know, but it is dark. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, four teaspoons of sriracha here. This isn't gonna be spicy. I'm gonna go a little. Oh, I made a mess of the. Ooh, I'm making a mess everywhere. Let me wipe it off. One pinch of sea salt, quarter teaspoon of allspice, quarter teaspoon of chipotle powder. Is it like, is it like chipotle or is it like chipotle? Uh, or is it like chipotle? Is it Chipotle? 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 <laughs> I don't know. How I, is it actually I, I, pronounced? I don't know if it's Chipotle. That it's does Chipotle that. or it's Chipotle. I always say Chipotle, but then in this video I said Chipotle. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, green Cholula. One and three quarters teaspoon. Maybe it's like an is Aztec she... word and it's like pronounced uh, Chipotle. Chipotle? Yeah, maybe. Chipotle? Chipotle? Isn't that... Chipotle? Isn't that how they like I don't know how Aztecs. Don't ask me. I can't even say freaking uh, Shans Alize properly. Oh, Shans Alize. There are many words that I can't pronounce, apparently. That's what I learned about myself since doing YouTube. Say so, green chalula, salat, shiracha, allspice, chili, kosher, lemon, pineapple, orange. Cool. Oh, I guess we put in the, uh, the star of the show here, which is a cup and a half of Jägermeister, and this should be chilled. 
thing is, is that like, do I have four cups in here now? Is four cups gonna even fit in here? I feel like our hip pitcher might be a bit, a bit on the small side. I feel like two cups is gonna, gonna fill this. Yep. I need a bigger, uh, need a bigger, bigger volume container. So this is what we're gonna do. Ready? Ready, steady, Freddy? This is what we're gonna do. No, it's exactly four cups. Now I'm gonna pour it back in here. So at least we have the ratios correct. And then we'll just have like a little overage. I think we need more attractive kitchenware, Marius. Mm -hmm. This is it. So that's our Bloody Mary mix. We're gonna take a little tahini. Which, uh, fun fact, if you are having, <laughs> <laughs> if you're having trouble finding it in the grocery store in the where it should be in the spice section, uh, you have to go to produce and find it. Give this a little rubby de doo dah over here, like so, and rim it nicely. Let's clean this up a little. Look at that. Look how nice it is. A little mustache. A little mustachio. We are going to take a little bit of Guinness, about an ounce and a half. Pour it in. And we're just gonna add in a little Bloody Mary mix. Add in some ice. And then we're gonna pour some more in. Garnish with a uh, celery. Let's give this the old college try, shall we? Oh, wow. That is freaking good. It's spicy, it's fruity. You get the botanicals from the Jägermeister. It was a little creamy from the Guinness. That is fantastically good. It's nice and spicy too. And then you get a little bit of that allspice flavor. Here, we should try it with the tahini. Oh yeah, get a little more spice. Ooh, that is fantastic. I mean, those fruit juices are like really prevalent in it as well. And that orange is just so nice and bright, but you get a lot of the complexity of the Jägermeister in there as well. And I just, I, I don't wanna forget to give credit where credit is due. This cocktail was created by uh, Patrick Gaggiano and Willie Shine, and we got the recipe from Maggie Hoffman's Batch Cocktails book, which is a fantastic book for lots of different batch cocktails. So you guys should go check it out. Uh, link is in the description below. There it is, guys, Jägermeister Bloody Mary. The Muerto Vivo is a cocktail from Shannon Mustafer's uh, book, Tiki, uh, Modern Tropical Cocktails. We are slowly bartending our way through this entire book. Uh, Muerto Vivo literally means zombie in Spanish. So it is a, I'll give you one guess what, what riff this is on. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, super easy. Three quarters of an ounce of Don's Mix. Don's Mix is a two to one ratio of grapefruit juice and cinnamon syrup. Isn't that Don's Mix number two? Don's Mix, Don's Mix number two, yeah. I think it actually is Don's Mix number two. The thing is, is that nobody ever makes Don's Mix number one. So for all intents and purposes, it's Don's Mix. But yes, I, I believe technically, yes, you were right. It's Don's Mix number two. I only remember because uh, you corrected me in a, in a different video. And now you are correcting me in this one. Tit for tat, Marius, tit for tat. And then we're gonna do uh, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of Jägermeister, the star of the show. Half an ounce of 151. I'm using the Hamilton, which I like a lot. And then uh, we are using some aged rum. I like to do Caribbean rum. Uh, Shannon uses the um, Florida Cognac seven year. I'm using uh, Angostura seven instead. We're doing an ounce and a half. Give it a whip shake. Ungated pour straight into the glass. Top it up. And then the piece de resistance. We're gonna take out the blowtorch. The blowy, as I like to call it. Were you looking for the cinnamon? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. How do you know I was looking for the cinnamon? I guess uh, you usually burn the cinnamon. Yes, cinnamon. We're gonna burn it, make it nice and aromatic and kind of burndy. Cinnamon, if you let it go, it actually kind of burns somewhat like, like incense. I mean, it is a tree. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is technically bark, right? Yeah. We'll just stick that in. Voila. The Muerto Vivo, let's give it a taste. And not singe my eyelashes off. Ooh, nice. The combination of the lime juice, the Don's mix, and the and the Jägermeister is pretty fantastic. It tastes like something familiar, but I can't really quite put my hands on it. It's like, you get the grapefruit, the the, the cinnamon, you get the botanicals from the, from the Jägermeister. 
The 151 is obviously pretty strong, but you know, it's not super harsh and it's, you're not reading that there's 151 in here and that's what's gonna make this drink a dangerous drink because you don't necessarily know that there's 151 proof rum in here. And then the body of the cocktail being provided by the Angostura. That has a nice tropical feel without being overly tropical. It's balanced, but it's on the tart side of balance. So it's really nicely uh, well done zombie riff. There it is. The Muerto Vivo. This cocktail is definitely going to challenge your perception of what is acceptable in cocktails. It's called The Loser, and it was created by an amazing Boston bartender named Brother Cleave. So in a glass, we are going to use, if I can open it. Oh my God. There we go. Doing three drops of the Bitterman's Hellfire Bitters. Quarter of an ounce. It says espresso liqueur, so I'm using the Mr. Black. Three quarters of an ounce of Jägermeister. One ounce of Pepsi Cola, half an ounce of beef broth, and two ounces of whiskey. I'm using the uh, Nika coffee grain. Oh. Am I gonna have room for more ice? I don't know. Let's give it a stir. Let's give it a taste. Holy shit, that's not bad. Whoa, it was crazy tasting. Not bad and crazy tasting is not promising. Uh, no, it actually, notes. it tastes good, but it's just like, I don't know, it's weird. It's like you taste the Pepsi and the coffee, like most prominently. You get a little bit of the, the barrel notes of the whiskey, although maybe I would have used something 100 proof. The beef gives it some savoriness. You get a little bit of spice from the Hellfire bitters, but it's only three drops, so it's not super prevalent in the cocktail. And it's just like, It kind of tastes like, I don't know what it tastes like. It tastes like kind of like a Irish coffee that already has the sweetness in it. And then just like a little savory something right in the middle of it. The Nika grain whiskey has kind of a short finish. And so I think I would use something that has a longer finish maybe something that's hundred proof. So you gotta punch it up a little bit more, but it's not the like F you to all of humanity that I thought this was gonna be. I thought this was gonna taste like a like a like an ashtray, but it, it doesn't. It, it, it actually tastes really good. Uh, and it's a nice it's got a nice balance to it too. Yeah, the Jägermeister, I mean like I didn't mention the Jägermeister in the but you know it's like coffee, the Jägermeister and the Pepsi are all very, you know, kind of hand in hand. And you got the savoriness of the beef, and then you have uh, the whiskey, which is um, giving you the body of the cocktail. I wish it was a little more prevalent though, and a little, like a little longer. Uh, this is not the whiskey that uh, Brother Cleve used, but the whiskey that Brother Cleve used was a whiskey from Ransom. That's like $90 now. So I'm sure that when he created this cocktail, that whiskey was a lot cheaper. Uh, I think it's just like a American whiskey. It's not bourbon, it's not rye. It's just like kind of blended whiskey. I thought the Nika coffee grain would go really well. And it does, but it's just the finish is too short. So I want it to be more punchy. But otherwise, not a bad drink. Not a bad drink at all. His name is Brother or he's like a No, he's a just monk. known as Brother Cleave. He's, he's like a that's monk? His, like, that's his like name, I don't know. That's his a professional name that people know him. It's not like Prince, his name is Prince, right? It's, I don't know. It's not Prince, it's some other name. There are people called Prince, so. What? There are people called Prince. So. That's true, but Prince's name isn't Prince.